If you ask a random group of New Zealanders where they think Kiwi live, it's a fair bet many will say only in remote, inaccessible bush, far away from any humans. And that's a perfectly understandable answer. But it's wrong. What Backyard Kiwi has discovered over the years in Whangarei Heads is that providing Kiwi have protection from predators, have a reasonable food supply and somewhere suitable to nest, they can live very close to us indeed, even in a busy, noisy quarry. Here at Parua Bay at the start of Whangarei Heads, Sean Robinson and his team at Manaya Excavators go about their daily work knowing a kiwi called Darwin is often just a few metres away. Oh, we've got a kiwi here in the pampas. There's a bit of a hole here where he um, comes in and out at sort of night, but we've got a lot of noise going on here with the digger arriving and, and with the ramps and the machine coming off. And he's just been living just in that little spot in there. And he comes out here at night time and he lives in there during the day. Although Sean and his family never actually see Darwin, they are still very attached to him. He's our Kiwi because we do all the trapping around here. Um, for cats and stoats and, and, and we're pretty hot on sort of keeping the dogs away. So uh, my wife and my kids, they just love the idea of the Kiwi sort of living here. So that's, that's why it's ours, yeah. Keeping tabs on Darwin and the other monitored birds in Whangarei Heads is the job of backyard Kiwi's Todd Hamilton. Today, Todd is hoping to locate Darwin in the quarry to catch him for his annual health check and to swap his transmitter out for one with a fresh battery. Darwin was released on Mount Manaya as a mature adult in 2006, but he set off almost immediately to find his own territory. He's walked probably 10k to be here. At the time I was a bit panicky because there weren't other Kiwi here. There had been in the past, but not. But we decided to leave him here and it turned out to be a pretty good thing to do because after a few years he did find a girlfriend and he's bred successfully here for oh, six or seven years now. He has two nests a year usually and out of those he'll get a couple of three chicks. This way. There are approximately 880 kiwi in Whangarei heads. Only eight are monitored like Darwin. The stories of these kiwi and their families are shared on the Backyard Kiwi website, with profiles of each bird and regular updates of their latest activities. The monitoring of Darwin's family in particular has led to some surprising discoveries. We're learning stuff more and more all the time. You know, mum coming back just to keep a bit of an eye on the chicks sometimes. We didn't think that happened. The chicks interacting. You often see the two chicks on camera interacting. It's almost like they're playing together. Apart from this one day when Todd wants to catch Darwin, he really, if ever, sees him. Darwin's transmitter records his activity and sends the information in a series of beeps. And it's this data stream that tells Todd what Darwin's up to. Three, four, five. So from that, I can work out he's active for almost 11 hours last night, or slightly over 11 hours, and so I know he's not nesting, so there's no risk of disturbing his nest, so I can go in now, so it's nice and safe. So I've just got to pinpoint accurate, get where he is, and then catch that little bugger. It's directional, so the louder it gets, the closer we are to him. He's over here, he's in that pampas bush there, I reckon. This is not the same pampas bush where Sean Robinson knows Darwin often lives. But it's no surprise Darwin has got others on the go. They nest in pampas bushes, it's an all-time favourite. They don't have to dig a burrow in the ground, but by nesting in a pampas bush, they are keeping their eggs dry and insulated, far better than the ground. And even though pampas is a weed, I think it makes a better kiwi nest, because our hatching survival is way higher than it is in other places where the birds nest in traditional nests in the ground. Todd is hugely experienced in catching kiwi, but it's never easy. And foremost in his mind is the health and safety of the bird. Come on, old fella. Oh, no, buddy. You're looking good, that's all right. 
You're right. This won't take long, fella. And this is just about due its 12 months battery. Legs all good and healthy. Put a new band on, new transmitter. I'll do. It doesn't look very dignified, but the legs are real strong. I'm going to take them together so he doesn't get hurt and he doesn't hurt me. Because those claws can cause a bit of grief, like an old dinosaur. Okay, just got to do a couple of things. Give him a bit of a health check. Checking his condition on his back. Had two nests this year, so he's a bit bony. He'll need to feed up a bit before he starts his breeding season, which is going to be soon, isn't it, buddy? This guy's actually blind in one eye, but that doesn't slow him down. And the only reason I know he's blind in one eye is because when I look on the trail cam, you can see one glowing and one not. Just have a look, this is Bill, keep his ears. He's listening to us. Very, very good hearing, and they rely a lot on it to communicate, to growl, just a hole in the side of the head, but very good hearing. And these feathers here have evolved to be like whiskers on a mammal. They're actually not whiskers, they're feathers, but they do the same job as whiskers, so you can sense with those. And down the end here, two very small nostrils for a very good sense of smell. And inside this bill here, you can pick up vibrations, and that's what he's doing when he's tapping for his food. So very delicate up this end of the bird, very strong at the back. Working carefully, but as quickly as possible, Todd swaps Darwin's transmitter for one with a new battery. He checks the transmitter attachment is not causing Darwin any problems. They're like a well-fitted wristwatch. And Kiwi do get used to wearing them. Just check his weight. For a boy, 2.2 kilos is, is getting up there, ready to breed. Oh yes, the next breeding season is fast approaching and Mrs D is in the quarry here somewhere, so Darwin has some work to do. Just going to let you have a little smell, eh, buddy? You know this is home, eh? You know this is home. Away you go. Whangarei Heads is a Kiwi stronghold, but more birds are following Darwin's lead and moving out into new territory. These frontier birds are living proof that the dream of Kiwi re-established throughout Northland can be a reality. All the communities in these areas where, where the Kiwi have expanded out have embraced them and they have their own land care groups. We've got a thing called Kiwi Link out here. We've got a whole thing called Kiwi Coast where the birds are walking up the Kiwi Coast of Northland and more and more communities are looking after their Kiwi. With a bit of work, they're going gangbusters. We can farm, have a quarry, have forestry, live, play, work here with our Kiwi. It works. Remember, you can check out Darwin's story and the other Kiwi we monitor by visiting the local Kiwi profiles section of the Backyard Kiwi website. We're also on Facebook and our YouTube channel where you'll find other Backyard Kiwi videos.